there's a host of different ways to build a fire, depending what you want it for, and our British woods all burn slightly differently. Some give more heat, some more flame, and knowing which does what is helpful. I've got dead beech branches, and I've got some dead withered oak branches, spine oak, which burns like coal. And I'm using those because I want to produce some embers. And uh, that'll burn hot and slow, ideal for cooking. Bark can harbour bacteria, and when heated, give a bitter taste to your kebab, so it's best to clean it off. In good bushcraft, the solutions to problems should be both simple and elegant. Salami is a really useful thing to carry with you as an emergency food. It's got a lot of fat and protein in it, which helps to keep you warm. Also, when you cook it like this, it just tastes fabulous. Tell you what, I may not have the flair of the TV chefs, but in terms of flavours, I think I've got a march on them here. Mm. Mm. For British plants, then, May is all about new green growth. Tender leaves, early flowers, young shoots. Life taking off. In terms of wildlife, it's an incredibly busy month. Hibernating animals are re-emerging, and young ones are starting to appear in a trickle that soon becomes a torrent. Observing the larger mammals of Britain can be really challenging because many of them are nocturnal but you can gain a fascinating insight into their nighttime activities by piecing together the signs and traces, the tracks they leave behind in the night. The challenge is that it demands an entirely new way of moving and looking at the outdoors. To track, you have to slow down and you achieve that by switching on your senses and turning up the volume of what you can see and feel around you. What I'm searching for are things that are out of place, things that shout at me, this is not as it should be. Finding those things requires you to be passive, to take in the overall view and let your subconscious search the picture and find them. The harder you look for them, the more narrow your field of view and the less you see. The first obvious sign are these divots that have been kicked up by a pony. And when I look really carefully, I can actually see a tail hair that's come. It even tells me the pony had a black tail. There's also some other hair here, but this is different. This is the hair from a fallow deer. Several nights ago, a fallow deer has laid down here. It could even have been in the daytime, and it's scratched out some of its winter coat, which is what it's left here. At this time of year, the coat is changing from winter to summer. And the, one of the reasons I know this is deer hair is that it snaps really easily.
but the majority of sign around here has been made by badgers. The area is strewn with badger holes, more than 15 I'd say, and some of them are active. Quite a few things around this hole that show me that it's in use. Oh, I look carefully there, trapped on that root, there's a badger's hair. It's much longer than the deer hair and it doesn't break. It's not, it's not brittle. It's a little bit springy, rather like our hair. Then a couple of other things I've noticed. Here I've got a piece of bracken frond and you can see from the moisture that that's been broken off within the last 12 hours. And over here is a bluebell bulb which has been dug up. Badgers like to eat bluebell bulbs and sometimes when you walk through the woods you can hear this crunching sound like people crunching on pickled onions. And that's the badgers munching on the old bluebells. <laughs> Fantastic sound. This is a real classic sign of badgers. These are claw marks left here. A lot of these would have been made when there was still bark on this tree and the badgers were searching for insects underneath. I remember on one occasion coming across badger tracks like this high up on a, on a tree, about five foot off the ground and it was about that wide and you could see where they'd gone up and then slid off and grabbed hold of it like a cartoon and the tracks went straight down and underneath it was just a drop to the ground. Fantastic sight. Once you've got your eye in for typical badger sign, it's easy to spot other sets. This sand is the spoil from recent digging, creating the perfect oval badger-shaped hole. see the badger so I don't want to disturb them too much just want to come and have a look in daylight so I can see where the main holes are gives them a much better chance of spotting the badgers before they spot me but before I get myself settled I have one thing to do recognizing animal tracks is a difficult but useful skill to learn so I'm making a sand trap here on a path the badgers use regularly Hopefully, we'll get good, clear prints by the morning. There's only one thing left now, and that's to choose the place to sit. The first thing I need to do is just test the breeze a little bit. I'll throw these leaves up, and they're blowing back behind me. That's important. If I were to put myself up here, it wouldn't work at all, because my scent would be blown down to the badgers, and I won't get to see them. So what I'm looking for is somewhere on this side here. Where I've hung my coat, there's that beech tree. That looks really good because there's an overhang creating a bit of shadow. And I can lean up against that and be comfortable and still for long periods. So that looks ideal. Yeah, that feels comfortable. I've got a good view of the set. Excellent. All I need to do now is to get dressed so that I'll be warm and check the scent with a little bit more accuracy. This dark woolen jacket is perfect for sitting out. It's warm, doesn't rustle, and because it looks like moss, I'll merge into the background better. to be a high seat in the new forest and somebody, nobody's quite sure who, but somebody had carved in it advice to the stalker of the deer and it said very simply, sit still, look long and hold yourself quiet. And that's very good advice. Advice I'm going to follow tonight. 